There is another reason for them to smile and live with hope. It is because of this man, Salesian priest Father Herman Schultz. Sent to Rwanda by his order in 1979, he quickly recognized the need for an orphanage because of the number of orphaned children. He began with a tent in an open field. It grew quickly, thanks to the help of many in the Western world. By 1994, he had a flourishing mission with over 150 children. Because Father Herman was outspoken on social justice, he was marked to be killed in 1994. But the Belgian troops moved in quickly and took him out of Rwanda. Little did he know what was to follow. Within a few weeks, the genocide occurred and over 800,000 Rwandans were massacred. 5,000 were killed in father's mountain village of Musha. 1,285 women and children tried to seek refuge in his parish church. It was of no avail. They too were massacred. Then they went into father's compound and killed his children. Father spent a year grieving this massacre. But hope prevailed when he heard the call from God to return to his people. Upon his return, Father has created this shrine as a reminder of the genocide. These are the skulls of many who were killed in his church, hacked to death by machetes. Here, the gravesite of many women and children massacred in his village and mission. Today, Father Herman's orphanage flourishes once again. It truly is an oasis from poverty, a place where children receive three meals a day, their diet consisting of beans, rice, bananas, fruits, and vegetables, a place where water runs from the taps, and there is hydro to light up the orphanage at night. This hydro, provided by a gas generator, allows for a television so the children can watch movies twice a week. Most of all, this place is one that offers an opportunity through its elementary and high school. Now every one of Father's children will receive an education up to grade 12, and from there, with the help of sponsorship, some of Father's kids will be sent to universities in Europe. In addition to the academics, the kids are expected to learn one of many trades. There are those that are taught to be tailors. They learn to make and repair their own clothes. Others learn to pour concrete, a useful trade outside this mission. Some learn the trade of welding, repairing bicycles, and making beds for the children to sleep on. Some learn cooking in their preparation of the food for themselves, and others learn carpentry, providing this mission with all the furniture required, as well as providing desks for its elementary and high school. Some have become experts at cultivating the acres of land that Father has to keep his children fed. Others care for their greenhouses with hundreds of trees to be planted. Some even learn basic medicine to provide health care. Everyone in this orphanage has a job, each job teaching them a life skill, and each job contributing to the betterment of the whole community. The learning of these trades and duties has made this orphanage completely self-sufficient. This is also a place where there is a wonderful harmony between nature and its people. Beautiful trees, flowers, plantations and animals. A self-sufficient oasis that allows them to survive. Most importantly, this is a place where the children have Father Herman, a man they consider their father and mother. The challenge for him has been great, but God gives him the reason and the strength for his work. I'm uh, belonging to the Salesian Fathers of Don Bosco, and in our congregation there is a use uh, to go to the mission, well, if uh, volunteer. They're not sending, there's not obligation to go to the mission. So I asked to go to the mission, and the superior at Rome, he asked me, uh, he told, yes, you can go, and, and he asked me, where, which place you wish to go? You can go to India, or Haiti, or Rwanda. And he joined it. If you wish a place where people are very poor, they need help, I would uh, suggest you to go to Rwanda. So for me, it was clear to go to Rwanda. Even 
that at that time I didn't know where is Rwanda, what I will find in Rwanda, but now I'm happy that I went to Rwanda. The biggest challenge here for me is to, to, to help these young people and to prepare them a very good man. That means I wish to send them to the good school. For this reason I founded even our one high school. Uh, I am telling even that to them and I uh, myself I have this uh, good ambition that everyone must make the best thing of his life and I will create here, give for them all conditions to make of their own life the best thing and to reach good positions in the human society. So they have to, to accomplish higher studies than uh, for them who are we have the capacity, the other, to, know, to learn good crafts. Even this poor country, if someone knows good the things he learned, like the crafts or the study, every time he will find a good occupation, a good job. So my challenge is to help them to be uh, uh, self-sufficient in their life, and to, but not only self-sufficient, but also to organize a wonderful uh, life who is giving joy because you are uh, uh, employing all your capacities for your life and to help other people.